Hello and welcome again to another installment of Jeep's Rock. As you can see, I could barely get over this huge box. It's another great day to be able to add extra weight to the Jeep. Um, we're getting ready to put on the Terraflex Alta cargo rack. And this of course will be in black to match the dark side. So uh, stay tuned as we go ahead and open up this box and uh, see what's all in it. I will say that there is a sticker right here on the UPS sticker. It says heavy package and the weight is 97 pounds. So stay tuned to see what's all inside here. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and uh, open up this box. As you can see right off the bat, it's packaged very well. And all that I'm uh, showing you here today is all also in steel. except for the basket portion, which the rails themselves are aluminum, but everything else is steel. So it's gonna be able to hold a lot of weight, as well as be very rigid and very quiet once it's been installed on the back of the Jeep. I mean, just look at the look at the quality, and that's actually where you could actually, if you need to, use it as a step if you needed to to get up on top of the of the Jeep if necessary. And again, this is for the Ulta Cargo Rack by Terraflex, and it's made for the Jeep J case. Assembly and hardware box. Another very large piece that's going to be on the other side um, that's going to mount to the portion which is necessary to hook to the, the hinge carrier that's also made by Terraflex. So that's also required for this all to happen. I'm going to leave these wrapped up for now, but these are going to be the aluminum rails that are going to go around to build the basket. A couple more steel pieces. And this right here that I'm unboxing is going to be the actual part of the basket. Ooh, it's heavy. This is where all the weight's at. And this will allow you to use what are called the action packers are made by Rubbermaid. You can put up to uh, three of them. And then on the side, you can see all the different parts that will be available for tie downs if necessary. But that's gonna be it. So stay tuned as we uh, go ahead and build. Before I go any further, I just wanna show you real quick. Um, this is the action packer. This is an eight gallon by Rubbermaid and it's getting an action packer. And you can take up to three of these in here. So they're nice and tight. Slide up to three of them. Put two of them if you wanted to, and then just bring a tie down to the other side, lock it in, and you're good to go. Okay, to uh, speed up the uh, video here, I went ahead and unboxed everything, laid everything out so that you can see 
um, all the pieces that are going to be required to put this together. It may look a little overwhelming, but don't don't be too uh, too scared. There's a lot of this that's going to be repetitive since you're going to have to make the rails and the ends. So uh, just want to show you a few different pieces that Terraflex provides. They're also very nice to be able to put them in a bag such as this and then also actually label exactly what it is. This is an M6 HD socket with a by 10 button so you know exactly what uh, what is in each bag. And what I'll be doing is even though I'm installing this um, inside the house for this first part of the build, I'm going to go ahead and put them in a Ziploc bag for the ones that have a, multiples just so that I don't lose anything because I'll be moving stuff around, filming. And also I wanted to show you these really nice corners that they've put on here. And as you can see, it's got the TerraFlex logo. So you'll be able to represent TerraFlex when you're on the trail. Okay, I went ahead and cleaned up the first step, which was to add the passenger side bracket. I wanted to show you that even though it does say top and top, it doesn't say which one's left or right. And so I just wanted to show you to confirm it's the right side. You're gonna go over here and look right here for the center. And you'll see the other side has a center point, but also it has two more sides here, which on the other side, these two slots are missing. So this shows you that you have it on the right side. Um, and then what I've done is I've went ahead and put the first T-nuts on here loosely as recommended, as well as um, TerraFlex also adds some extra Loctite. And so I went ahead and put that on here as well. And I wanted to show you also, you notice that I left the box here. This is the exact same box that the um, cargo rack came in. So I went ahead and just left it on the bottom. And doing so allowed me to use the same table. And it's always best to work smarter and not harder. So I am installing this on my own. But now it's all nice and level. And I can easily put it on with myself instead of holding it or trying to lay it on the ground. Okay, this next step requires us to go ahead and add these aluminum rails. Again, everything else on the entire build is still except for these aluminum rails that go on the top and bottom. And the way this works is they are like T-nuts and they allow you to slide only one way and there's like a channel that has right here. So you just follow the channel and then slide it right through. And again, it says to leave these very loosened and definitely need to, if not, you have to back them out so that you can slide this through the channel. And that's okay, all there is to the it. steps that I've done so far is I went ahead and put the T-nuts through each one of the holes required across the basket. And I've slid almost all of the rails on here. Before I put on the last corner, just want to show you, you're going to need to do this uh, four times in, on each one of them. But when you go through here, you need to make sure that that T-nut right here, it may be a little bit hard to focus in, but that's actually curved right here instead of flat. And so that way you know you have it on the right. It's not flipped upside down. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and put that corner, put in the, the last side rails here on the side, and we'll go from there. I also wanted to show you that uh, TerraFlex's instructions here are very precise to tell you exactly uh, what numbers to use, where they go in each one of the diagrams. Really nice, clean um, instructions. Okay, you may be asking yourself as you're assembling this, how do we get this final corner here on the right. How do we get that one installed with all the other um, rails that have already been installed? To answer that question, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and make sure that you had all four in here. And then this whole final rail, you're gonna slide the T-nuts actually inside here. So there'll be two here. And then you keep this corner bracket without anything in it. So no hardware whatsoever, just the plastic shell. And then what you're going to do is you're going to slide that through here. And then with these already in the back, you're just going to line it up here like this, tighten them down. And then you also want to make sure that you've got your T-nut here on this corner as well that would require to be here. And then the far corners here on the side is going to be required to make sure you have T-nuts here and here. So just to recap, you're going to put a T-nut here, 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 and then two in the bar itself. And that should take care of it for you. So that's how you put that last corner piece in. Okay, here's a tech tip for you. Using the supplied Allen key, you can use this also for spacing. So that way it gives you a pretty good indication, um, keeping everything even on all sides. Again, you can see how this is here and here. 
and that just helps you get a quick eyeball making sure that this is all even. With these being even, now all I need to do is take this cap here and you just snap it on. It'll line up. You'll see some grooves right here. You'll just line that up and they'll click right in. Okay, the next step in this project is to bolt the driver's side bracket, which is shown here on the left. Um, getting ready to bolt that on right now. I went ahead and got rid of the workbench. It's just getting too heavy as well as it's now time to lay it on its side and do some bolts from underneath and above. So stay tuned and we'll uh, continue with this build. Okay, now that we have tightened up the driver's size bracket, now we need to put on this front facing bracket. And it's just going to go right across here. Bolt in place. And the reason I had that so easily put in is because I followed the directions and made sure that I loosely attached the driver's side bracket. That way we have a little bit of play that we can get it all lined up and we'll bolt that in. I'm just going to put a bolt right here just to hold this while I talk to you guys for just a second. I wanted to show you right here on step number 14. It mentions these three uh, different types. You have bolts, washers, and nuts. If you look at step number 13, it mentions the different numbers. These numbers are actually wrong. I think this is a, a typo from Terraflex. So just letting you guys know, it should be six millimeter bolts, 21, washers, 18, and nuts, 13. So just letting you guys know. If you try looking for these, these do not exist. Okay, up until this point, we've been, been using either the supplied four millimeter, or again, this is just a four millimeter as well, just a little bit more of a, a little bit more grip to it. But again, this is the one supplied by Terraflex, just a four millimeter key that you've been using. But now it's time to bump it up to a, a 730 seconds. Either use a ratcheting Allen socket or you can just use another one of these hex keys. Again, we want to make sure that these are loose, but we're going to a larger bolt, so we'll need to switch up our, our tools a little bit. All right, we've only got four more bolts that we need to do, and that is now that we have the passenger side, driver's side, and the front all braced in, still again loose. There's one, two, three, and four bolts that will bolt in here at the very bottom and keep all this uh, kind of a little bit more rigid and that's going to be our last step that we need to do to complete this assembly So thanks again, and I appreciate all your time and patience, and I hope this has been a, a helpful video for you and please uh, Tune in to the next installment of when this is actually going to be installed on the Jeep. Thanks again